Hey guys and welcome back to another colour grading tutorial on the channel. Today we're going to be using Adobe Lightroom once again to colour grade our photos. Now we're going to be doing an orange and teal colour grade using this photo today. This is the example. So I created an orange and teal preset pack for you guys. There are 14 presets down here and if you go ahead and check them out on our website you can see all of the before and afters. A lot of people have been saying it would be great to see what the uh, presets look like and what they do. Well I've gone ahead and I've compiled loads of photos on the website on this specific product so you guys can see exactly how these presets work. So go ahead and check that out if you guys are interested. Um, now this is the photo we're going to be editing. This is what it looks like before and obviously this is the after using the orange and teal preset that I created. So if I come down to the basics panel, actually we're just going to reset this image just to start off from scratch. Now we're just going to sort out the exposure and the contrast of the image to start off with on the basics panel. There's not really a lot more you do on the basics panel other than sorting out the white balance, which for this photo we're going to keep as it is and we may come back to and adjust later. Uh, now the first thing I like to do is just come straight into the shadows, increase the shadows so we can see more detail in the image and then drop off the highlights like that. Now when you do that you lose contrast. So with most images you want to have a little bit of contrast so we're going to come back and we're going to come to whites increase the whites and decrease the blacks that's just going to put some more contrast into the image and then what we're going to do on top of that is come to the contrast slider and we are going to increase the contrast now some of you may be wondering why we're doing the whites and the blacks well you can see if I drop off the whites and the blacks the image still looks kind of flat what you've done when you've dropped the highlights is you've kind of reduced the amount of highlights in the image and increased the amount of um, detail in the shadows by increasing the shadows uh, and just by brightening up the whites it just makes it look less uh, or slightly more realistic highlights and slightly more realistic shadows. Crushing those blacks really does kind of make the image pop a little bit more. That's why we didn't just increase the contrast slider. Uh, now you can come down to clarity. In this particular image I'm going to increase the clarity. Now if you're doing a portrait I recommend that you probably decrease the clarity but it really depends on your image. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do is increase the vibrance in this image. I want this image to really pop like I said at the beginning so increasing the vibrance is a really good way to do that. I don't like increasing the saturation because as you'll see if I do that now, the entire image just gets very weirdly oversaturated. Uh, all the colors sort of munge and mesh all together. It just, just doesn't really look very nice. So increase the vibrance tends to do a slightly more subtle increase in color. Uh, and then I'm going to decrease the saturation to about minus 5. Okay, so we're just going to leave the basics panel alone and we're going to come down to the camera calibration. And this is really where the image changes. This is really where we increase and put in that orange and teal look into your images. So we're going to come down to the red primary and you're going to drag that up to plus 100. And then the problem is with that, if you leave it like that, you get this sort of brown look in your image, which you don't really want. So you come down to the blue primary and you drag that all the way to the left. And immediately those oranges appear in your images and those teals appear in your image. And you can see, if you look at the background here, you can really see how this is used in sort of modern day films. The orange and teal color grade is a very common color grade. Um, so like I said, I did create this preset pack for you guys because a lot of you guys have been messaging me asking how to do these orange and teal color grades. So I thought it was about time I updated the old video and I created this one for you, just a more in-depth tutorial on why this works. Um, so like I said, if you're going to do uh, an orange and teal, the main thing you want to do is follow my order. You want to do your basics panel, come down to your camera calibration to sort out the base orange and teal color grade. So now you've got that in your image. Um, you can then go in and tweak the colors a little bit more. Now one thing I'm going to mention to you guys is you can actually do an orange and teal color grade with 50% or less or any, any slider all the way up in your uh, red primary and any way down in your blues if that makes sense. So it doesn't have to be plus 100 and minus 100. If you do it in between you get a more subtle orange and teal look. But because I said at the beginning we're going to go for a real punchy orange and teal look, I'm going to go plus 100 and minus 100. Now you can if you want to come in and you can increase the red primary saturation um, which basically just makes the blues a bit more saturated and you can do the same in the blue primary. I'm just going to leave those basically around zero because we're now going to come into the HSL slider and we're going to mess around with the colors there. Now for those of you who don't know what the HSL slider is, it's the hues, saturation and the luminance and the hues basically means you can come into each color channel and you can create different colors. So you can see here if I come into the reds and drag it all the way to the left we get this more vibrant ready deep orange. If I drag it to the right it gets more yellow. Um, for example the blues, this is where you get the teal look. If you drag it all the way to the left you get this really green blue which to be honest is uh, very often if you look at people's Instagrams a lot of the time people who are starting off with orange and teal they tend to overdo it on the teal. Uh, you really want to make sure the teals are quite subtle in your image because it is a very powerful color and lots of images do have lots of blue in them. If you start to overdo the teals, it can look very over-edited. 
Now, for this photo, we're going to come down and we're going to drop the reds all the way to minus 100. Uh, again, if you're doing skin tones, if you've got a portrait, I would leave the reds on the oranges alone. If you are going to drop them, drop them probably no lower than minus 11 uh, for the reds and for the oranges. You want to mess around and possibly drop the oranges slightly, but really keep it around minus um, 5 if you're going to drop it at all. I wouldn't drop it too much more. In this particular case, I'm dropping it to minus 9 because I like the sort of slightly reddy orange look we're getting here. But, like I said, with skin tone, you don't want to mess around with the oranges and the reds. Otherwise, the skin tone does look very weird. You kind of get a very pink uh, red skin tone, which isn't very realistic. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is come to the yellows and the greens. Now, in this image, there isn't too much yellow or green, so it's not going to matter too much. But if you have got a forest in the background, for example, this is where you really do notice this sort of funky effect you can get with orange and teal. You can either leave it at zero and just have your greens like they would be in the image normally, or what you can do is get your yellow slider and you can drag the yellows all the way down and drag the greens all the way down. And what you'll notice is that the, um, the color of your trees kind of becomes more brown kind of becomes more orange uh, and then what you can do is come down to saturation and you can decrease the saturation in the yellows and decrease the saturation in the greens and you get a really cool look going on with your trees. Now you can see in some of our previous videos uh, some examples of where I talk about this for example the Sam Calder video um, I really talk about how you can do those colors there so if you want to go check that out go check out the channel and if I remember I will put the link in the description. Okay, so moving on, we're going to come to the aquas and the blues. Now, like I mentioned previously, if you drag the blues all the way to the left, you get very teal um, blues. If you drag the aquas to the left, you will also get the same effect. Now, a lot of the time with the aquas, you get a, a more subtle teal look. Uh, and this is really sort of the, the, the secret behind orange and teal. If you're going to do an orange and teal color grade, I recommend decreasing the aquas to get the teal look. But because you don't want to overdo the teal look, it looks kind of nice in the foreground here. But again, in the background, you it's kind of too tealy. Uh, this is where uh, the secret really lies. You want to come to the blues, and you actually want to increase the blues. You don't want to be decreasing the blues. So you're taking out some of the teal in the blue slider. Uh, so if I reset the aquas, you can see what this is actually doing to the blues. It's making them more purple. Uh, so we're kind of counteracting the overdoing too much teal, if that makes much sense. Um, so we've dropped the aquas down to about minus 50%. Um, that's going to keep some of the teal in the image. But then we've come to the blues and we've dragged it up just a little bit to about plus 40, just so we can make sure the teals aren't overblown in the image. And then as for the purples and magentas, we're just going to leave those alone because there are no purples or magentas in this image really. So I hope that was a more detailed example of how to use the hue slider. A lot of people have been asking me to kind of do a few more detailed tutorials, so I thought that would help a little bit more. Now, if you come down to saturation, again, this really depends on the image. For this particular image, I'm going to keep it saturated because I like the look it's giving on the car. I think it's really important to have this car standing out around this background. Now, if you're doing a portrait, for example, like I said again, the reds and the oranges, you want to be very careful with how much you do in the hues and the saturation. You don't want to overdo the saturation too much because, again, you're going to make the skin tone look very weird. In this case, I'm going to drag the reds up to 60% because we haven't got any skin tone, so we're not really going to damage anything too much by introducing more red saturation. All we're going to do is make these lines on the car really stand out, and that's the effect we're going for that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you remember what this looked like um, before we started the color grade, this is the before and this is the after. For those of you who are curious, uh, I just pressed the backslash key there so you can see the before and the after. Uh, then the orange saturation, we're just going to increase that as well to about 30%. It doesn't really matter too much the saturation, it just depends on what look you're going for and when you're editing. Uh, all of these presets do have different settings here for the saturation and hues, so what I recommend is turning it on for your uh, image and coming straight into the HSL slider and messing around. A few people do ask me why the presets don't work, and a lot of the time it just requires a minor adjustment in the saturations and the hues for each individual colour, and then the presets work perfectly fine. Okay, so we've done the reds and the oranges, the yellows and the green we mentioned before, now, as for the aquas, we're going to increase the aquas because that's where we get our teal from. This is an orange and teal color grade, so we want to keep the teal in this photo that we have just introduced earlier, but we don't want to overdo it, so we're going to come to the blues, and we're going to drop the saturation in the blues to about minus 15, minus 20%. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you don't want to overdo the teals in the image. Um, it's very easy to make it look weird if you uh, do it. So, for example, if I were to come here, drag up the blues, 
um, to let's say 60% and then down here up sorry up here on the hues if I weren't to counteract the aquas I could put it here and this is the sort of look you see happening a lot on Instagram with people starting out with orange and teal we're just gonna put that back somewhere around there okay and again we're gonna leave the purples and magentas alone because there are none of those colors in our image final thing we're gonna mess around with is the luminance now luminance is just the color brightness so for example reds you can see I'm brightening up that color okay so I'm gonna drop the luminance in the reds just because it brings out more detail here in the front of the image uh, oranges I'm going to increase again it just kind of gives the image a little bit more contrast and then I'm gonna leave the yellows and the greens alone uh, I'm gonna come down to the aquas I am going to probably drop the aquas uh, luminance that just means we can see more you see if I overblow the color it kind of makes it too bright so we're gonna drop the aqua slightly and increase the luminance in the blues just to kind of keep up with that shine on the side of the car and then again we're gonna leave the purples and magentas alone okay so we're almost done with this color gray uh, we're gonna come down to split toning we've got two more things left to do now split toning for those of you who also don't know um, if you press alt on your keyboard you can see all this is going to do is add a color to your highlights or a color to your shadows so I'm just pressing alt on my keyboard and I'm dragging the slider along until I get a sort of teal color that I like to go for then I'm just going to drag up the saturation to about 15 percent 10 percent uh, and it's just going to place that color in your foreground ever so slightly you won't really be able to notice much difference but you can see if I turn it off and on again especially if you look down here on the pavement it kind of gets rid of that pink hue Next, I'm going to come to the saturation in the shadows, increase that to about, I don't know, 15%, and then drag the slider along until I get a look I like. Currently, I'm thinking 249 is quite a nice look. Um, yeah, so we're going to go for 250, somewhere around there. You can always come back and adjust it. It doesn't make too much difference to your image. It's just a sort of nice undertone color. So you can see we've just made the image slightly more blue. I'm just going to talk about that for a second. The reason we uh, introduced blue is because if you remember previously in the HSL slider, we were talking about not adding too much teal to the image. Um, but I want to make sure that this is a very obvious orange and teal color grade, but I don't want the teals to be overpowering. So what I did is reduce the amount of teals in the HSL slider and mainly worked on the oranges. So then when I come to the split toning, I don't have to work on the oranges because we've already done those in the HSL slider. We're just going to work on the teals and we're adding a very soft color of teal in the highlights and the shadows so I hope that kind of brings some more detail to why we do that um, now the final thing we're gonna to come to the tone curve now the tone curve is an amazing tool always remember the tone curve uh, the tone curve we're basically in this case just going to use it for a more contrasty image so we're going to do our basic s curve so we're going to increase the highlights like this we're going to decrease the shadows like this and you can see already we just got a more punchy image and in fact I think we've overdone the highlights so we're going to drop that back and then one thing you can do which we're not going to do in this image but I'm going to demonstrate to you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about you can come to this final pin in the bottom and if you click it and drag it up you get this faded look in your image actually I'm just going to leave it on there just so you guys can see uh, this is an optional one put on the faded look some of these presets do have a faded look in the shadows some of them don't but I'll leave this on just so you can kind of see the effect that the fade does to the image um, so once you're done there oh, you can also fade out the highlights as well just by dropping off this top pin uh, and dragging it down as well just like that kind of fades off the highlights uh, I'm not going to do that because I think it kind of takes away from the image, but it's up to you really. So I'm going to close up the tone curve and that is it. The image is basically done. Now you can do a couple more things. You can come back, you can sort of increase the shadows a bit. We can always come back to the temperature slider and just sort of test it out. Do we want more blues in our images? In our image, so around there maybe. Um, but really and truthfully, there's not a lot more we can do to this image. One thing that is fun to test out is if you come to effects, uh, and this particular preset that I used, Orange Until 5, does have this effect. Um, and because we've, we've got a very wide image, but the main focus is the car, we added a vignette. So you can come to Highlight Property and just sort of drop this down to about minus 26. Uh, make sure your feather is about 80 to 100%. And there you go. It just basically adds a little bit of a vignette. It's kind of cool for these sort of car photos, just this vignette. You get this sort of effect quite often in car color grades where you can kind of just see the center of the image, but the sides of the image are darkened out so our eye is really drawn to this part of the image. So again, if I press the before, you can see what this image looked like before. It's a cool image, but you can definitely tell that the preset really does bring out the colors and life to this photo. So that's it, guys. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Uh, it's been a fairly long tutorial. It's been quite in-depth, but I hope 
it was useful. Like I said, the presets are on the website, and for those of you who are interested, there are, uh, I think, about 15, 14 to 10, 10 to 14 images on there that show all the before and afters, so you can really get an idea of how the presets work. Uh, I don't have time to go through all of them in this video, but there you go, that's how it works. That's how you do an orange and teal preset. That's how you make your own orange and teal color grade. So that's it, guys. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. I'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.